Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, I would now like to recognize uh, Ranking Member Altmaier from Pennsylvania, who is going to introduce our next witness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it is my pleasure to introduce Adam Levitin. Mr. Levitin is professor at the Georgetown University Law Center in Washington, D.C., where he teaches courses in bankruptcy, commercial law, and consumer finance. He has previously served as a scholar in residence at the American Bankruptcy Institute and as special counsel to the Congressional Oversight Panel supervising TARP. Before joining the Georgetown faculty, Professor Levitin practiced law and served as a law clerk for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Professor Levitin holds a J.D. from Harvard Law School and degrees from Columbia University and Harvard College. Welcome, Professor Levitin. Mr. Chairman Kaufman, Ranking Member Altmaier, and members of the committee, good afternoon. My name is Adam Levitin. I'm a professor of law at Georgetown University Law Center. My research and teaching focuses on consumer finance and financial regulation. I'm also a small business owner. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has only limited and generally indirect connections to small business finance. With three very limited exceptions, the CFPB's jurisdiction is restricted to consumer financial products. While many small businesses use consumer financial products, like personal credit cards and home equity lines of credit, for business transactions, Small business owners need, deserve, and want the same protections on their financial products, whether they are using them for personal or business use. Thus, the National Small Business Association has advocated for extending Truth in Lending Act protections to small business credit cards. Now, there are only two ways the CFPB might directly affect small business lending. First, the Dodd-Frank Act requires the CFPB to collect data on small business lending under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. This is to ensure against discriminatory lending in the small business space. The ECOA data collection requirement will impose some limited costs on lenders, but it will also provide an important protection for small businesses, particularly those owned by women and people of color. More generally, though, the CFPB has regulatory authority over almost all consumer financial pr service providers, large and small. The CFP CFPB regulations could affect the cost or availability of business credit. But I want to emphasize it is simply premature to judge the CFPB's impact on financial service providers, much less or you know, the, the impact of the CFPB on small business credit costs and availability. Instead, individual rules will need to be evaluated on their own merits when and if they are proposed. The Dodd-Frank Act imposes numerous safeguards on CFPB rulemaking to ensure against unnecessary regulatory burdens. CFPB rulemaking and adjudication is subject to the Administrative Procedures Act. It's also subject to the Regulatory Flexibility Act. The CFPB is one of only three agencies required to have, small, uh, to have regulatory flexibility review panels under the Small Business Regulatory Enforcement Fairness Act. The CFPB is also required to consult with prudential regulators on its rulemakings and to reevaluate those rulemakings within five years. Additionally, the CFPB is subject to Financial Stability Oversight Council re review for its rulemakings, which is unlike any other bank regulator. Finally, small banks and all but three credit unions are exempt from CFPB supervision and enforcement. Their supervision and enforcement remains with their existing prudential regulators. Now, I want to emphasize that this is a battery of safeguards that, is not, uh, that does not apply to any other bank regulator. It's also important to note that the CFPB is likely to help small businesses. The CFPB can help improve competition in the small, in small business lending by ensuring that uh, consumer, that consumer financial products, which are used by small businesses, are fair and transparent, uh, transparently priced. Small businesses want to use fair and transparent products. Second, the CFPB can help small businesses by helping small business customers. When consumers feel confident that they won't get caught by financial product tricks and traps, they are going to go have greater willingness to make purchases, including from small businesses. And the CFPB can help protect against consumer asset bubbles and thus smooth the volatility of consumer spending. That means a more stable business environment, which benefits small businesses. In short, the CFPB has limited jurisdiction over small businesses. It is subject to numerous safeguards to ensure against excessive regulatory burdens on small business, and it may be able to help increase the efficiency of small business lending uh, by increasing consumer confidence and spending stability. Thank you very much.